Today's video is sponsored by thedeckofmany.com. When new DMs jump into D&D for the first time, the campaigns that spawn from them can be a bit chaotic. With that in mind, you can start to paint a good picture on how younger, less rule-oriented DMs would run their games, and how the one-shots of my nine-year-old sister would have went down. A big thing to point out is that a lot of Dungeons & Dragons campaigns that I've played in were, for the most part, with my family. Because of that, I'm sure she was inspired by me when I told her, Hey, why don't you go make a campaign? And I shouldn't have been surprised when an hour later, we were all summoned to the table to play her one-shot. This would end up being the first session of many that she'd get to run in the future, and in this game, I was some dense human barbarian guy, and my two other sisters, the ones who played Signet and Tibbs from the Spire Academy video, made a rogue princess, not a literal princess, that was just her name, and another barbarian, I can't remember her name, so we're just gonna call her Better Than You, because she decided to roll her stats while I took average. Three natural sixes, huh? So the hook of the one-shot was that we were lost in the forest, and the goal was to get back home. Suddenly, a dwarf jumps out of the woods and says that we need to solve his puzzles if we ever want to head in the right direction. Princess the Rogue tries to shank him. You can't do that! Our DM responds. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Wow, he must be a high-level wizard, guys. We shouldn't mess with him. For the first puzzle Mr. Immortal Dwarf had for us, we were trapped in a cube-shaped cage, and I'm not kidding, Sans the Skeleton and Shrek jumped out of the woods and started T-posing towards us. In order to escape from this memeish hell, I showed that I was one of them by making cringy puns and T-posing as well. It seemed to be effective. Shrek let us go, and after a few more minutes, we could hear noises of creatures lurking in the woods. Then our little DM pulls out her iPad and records herself making howling wolf noises. Wait, wait, I, I still have the audio clip. Let me, let me go grab it. That gets me every time. So, a pack of wolves rushed at us through the forest, and every time one of them would attack us, she'd replay the sound effect. After we got ripped to shreds, the challenged dwarf said that we had defeated him, and we got to return home. So around a month after that campaign, my sister had thought up an idea for a winter-themed one-shot, but this time we were all better informed on our young DM's, how do I put it, play style? So we all decided to make characters that would better fit the dynamic. Hence, we ended up with the giant Alaskan bullworm barbarian, the potted plant warlock, the Isekai Cat, who used to be a fighter in another realm before he died to a chul and was reincarnated as a furry, and some blind woman from that one anime nobody likes. Try to guess which character I was. <coughs> anyway, the point of this one shot was that there were two small cozy cottages with random cute and completely harmless animals living inside of them. There was also a wall of force blocking us from the exit of this area, and our DM stayed silent and let us decide what we wanted to do. What if we kill the animals and see what happens? I agree with this. Meow. My choice was outvoted and outgunned, so the plant's decision had absolute authority over everyone else's. Hence, animal cruelty ensued. After killing everything in the petting zoo, the barrier around the exit decided to open. If I learned anything during this day, it was that violence always advances the plot. Anyway, with a small trek through the snow, we came across a chest with some sort of magical golden bow inside of it. None of us were good with bows, or arcana proficiency to identify it, so we pocketed the weapon and moved on. A moment afterwards, we came across a huge log cabin with wilted flowers scattered all around it. I was actually pretty impressed with her description of this area, because, at least to me, it emphasized how sudden the snow fell over this region. But all of that immersion was about to be broken, because once we opened that cabin door, there was a... Wait, let me check the size category chart real quick. Gargantuan Yeti just chillin' inside. See what I did there? What level are we again? Three. We're level three. Oh, yes. I forgot for a moment. Long story short, we figured out after 15 minutes of pointless attacks against this creature, 
that the Yeti was immune to all damage types. And the only thing that can hurt this guy was the golden bow. Are you kidding me? And may I remind you that none of us could use the bow except for me, because I'll remind you, plants don't have hands, worms don't have hands, and cats don't have hands. So I was the only person who could even hold the thing, and my dexterity was a negative one. Every round I had to shoot from the bow until Mr. Yeti slowly, but eventually hit the dirt. Fortunately for us, the Yeti was a pacifist, and was kind enough to casually allow me to whittle his health down to nothing, without even really putting up a fight. I'm guessing he was just so tired of living as an immortal Yeti, that he set up the whole dungeon for us to be able to free him from his mortal coil. Now if that was the story behind her one-shot, that would have been both an awesome narrative and a depressing one. Maybe I would have just told him to go see a therapist. Anyway, that's the last story for right now, guys. I had one more I wanted to share, but it would have taken at least another two weeks to animate, so I decided to make this video a bit short and try to work out a part two. Once again, this video was sponsored by thedeckofmany.com. They're a spellcaster's lifeline for everything magic related, with their animated spell cards for 5th edition. Personally, I'm a major image type man myself, and these cards make throwing out your spells almost like you're playing a game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I cast Conjure Elemental! You can't do that! Why are we still here? So, if you'd like to check him out, go to AnimatedSpells.com, link in the description. Mm -hmm.